We've now been joined by Kevin Harvick, driver of the number 29 Ford for SHR. I'm thankful I did not mess that one up. But Kevin, um, thank you for coming to spend some time with us. You've had a little bit of a busy week here at North Wilkesboro. Just talk a little bit about coming in today and in kind of your mindset heading into this weekend. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great week so far. Uh, we had a you know good Tuesday Wednesday with uh, the Cars Tour event. Had a lot of fun with that, and and um, you know I think for I, I still haven't been to the hauler yet, so I'm I'm excited about getting in the, the 29 car and being able to uh, you know to drive that. So it seems a little bit a little bit surreal, but you know I think as you as you look at everything that's kind of taken place and. Everything has happened, and, and here we are. So uh, between the racetrack and the car, it's going to be a, a great few days. All right. We're now going to go to questions for Kevin. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll start in the back and then come up front to Lee. Kevin, County back. Oh, okay, thanks. Kevin, County back, WXII. Um, we've heard from so many fans the last few weeks about how special this is because it brings back memories from when they were children coming here with their parents and now they are the parents bringing their own children. With this being your last season, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about what it means to you to have your own family here at this track this weekend and have you considered at all the possibility that in 10 or so years you might be watching your own son compete here yeah well you know I think when, when you look at uh, this particular event and everything that has happened uh, over the last you know, really I guess it's been really um, about a year and a half maybe a couple years um, you know since the transformation has taken place and we had the you know the modified race and the cars tour event and everything that we had last August and I think that's really when everybody realized that it was probably capable of being a reality um, you know, for, for me, I came back in 2010 when they had first cleaned the track up and trying to get some momentum to do exactly what we're doing today. But the timing was just not not the same as it is in 2010 as it was in as it is in 2023. So, you know, I think when when you look at um, and, and I think for, for me, really realizing the, the impact of, of the moment that the, the 29 car had and the win in Atlanta. Uh, is very similar to NASCAR with the feeling that you get when why why will, why and what the NASCAR fans like about coming back here is um, is just different, right? You know, it's coming back to North Wilkesboro and and having that that old school feel to it, and and generations of of families being able to do exactly like you say, bring their kids to the race and experience something uh, that they got to experience with their parents when when they were kids, and and you know, there's just North Wilkesboro is 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 um, you know it's a great facility, but there's just there's things that hit uh, the, those hardcore fans differently, and I think North Wilkesboro is one of those things that moves the needle, um, and I think that is very similar to you know the the 29 situation. It's not really about the car or my my name or. You know, it's really about the moment for NASCAR, and I think this is a this coming to North Wilkesboro is is, is exactly the same. It's a moment for NASCAR, and, and I think that's um, pretty neat. All right, we're going to go to Lee. Lee Spencer, CatchFence.com. What did you, you glean from being on the track the other night, and what does it portend for Sunday? Well, I know I know exactly how to get on and off pit road, and and. Um, you know, I think as as the race went on, you you kind of learned some of the the characteristics of of the groove. Um, but you know, I think from a power standpoint and the way that how heavy the Cup cars are, it's just a it's a much different driving style as far as what's good and what's bad and how much throttle you can use and how much brake you use and things like that. So there's just a there's a lot of different tendencies with the car, but you know, making laps around the track doesn't definitely doesn't hurt anything. So you don't have to waste any time uh, when you, when you first go out because the tires will be your will not be your friends uh, as you, as you go several laps into the run. So um, you know, we'll we'll see. But based on the simula simulator, there were several not very many times that you were able to get wide open. So um, we'll see how that goes. Rodney was on Sirius this week, and he said that it would probably be really emotional for you because this would be your last all-star race, and you were expecting a lot of people here this weekend. 
have you just kind of given yourself time to process that? Yeah, I think it's the it's the first one where I was like, oh man, you know, this is a this is a big a big moment um, just with with the 29 and you know seeing how excited Richard is to you know to, to see it on a track and all the things that that come with you know those those. 13, 14 years with, with RCR and, and being able to actually do this is, is you know, a pretty big, pretty big moment. Um, I think that the, the coolest part about it is, is the fact that the, the two companies work together and, and being able to um, have the respect of Richard and everyone there to, to be able to, to actually let them have us do this is, is something that, that means a lot. All right, we're gonna go to Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, Motorsports Tribune. Um, maybe we'll find out differently um, for practice, but I don't think we're going to see shifting because of the, the lack of grip in the track. So if that is true, um, how is that going to change the racing compared to maybe uh, what we saw in Martinsville the last two years? Yeah, I don't think there's anything you can compare to Martinsville. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of, so what kind of racing would we see then? If I that's have no case? idea. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's it's yet to be seen. You know, I think as as you... As you look at everything, I, 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 and I've told you guys this before. I'm not going to speculate on on what type of racing that we're going to see because it. I always stick my foot in my mouth when I when I speculate, as you guys do as well. Um, in case you were wondering, <laughs> when you start speculating on something that's never happened, you're just asking for nothing but trouble. I, I don't see it. You know, not not. It's going to be fun, but I don't know what that means as far as how the race is going to be. And then we've always had, you know, Florida Speed Weeks with New Smyrna and Dayton. you how many people that were just so excited to be at North Wilkesboro and be be around um, and be a part of the event and so you know I think it's really important and I think the all-star racism is a great race to be able to tie all that together and I think short track racing is is the best place for the all-star races to be held because you don't have to make anything up right it's just a race you don't have any gimmicks you don't have any any hoopla that, that goes with it to make it entertaining um, the only, I guess the only part that concerns me is, is the, some of the conversations that we had when we got to this point before when we had all these races clumped together as to what the crowds look like. So that would be my, my only interest as, as far as looking at it going forward, you know, as to how that gets moved around because I just, you know, I don't know how many events can be supported in, in one particular area back to back to back to back, I think. You know, when, when you look at going to Hickory on Thursday night with the Supers and Tuesday night here with the Supers, Wednesday with the Cars Tour, I mean, the short track stuff is, in, in my opinion, is a little bit different when it can tag on to those big events because I think that those, especially Hickory, has, has a built-in backbone of, of fan base that, that is going to come support, support the event. So that's my – I'm interested to see what everybody thinks after we get done running multiple weeks in a row. Yep. Okay. Right here. Hey, Kevin, Steve Reed, Associated Press. Um, I was wondering your thoughts on the track itself. You know, how do you think it's going to hold up, uh, you know, being an older surface? And uh, secondly, what, what was the first thing that when you came in here that you noticed it's different than, you know, your typical stop on tour? Well, the asphalt is, is definitely different because of, you know, the, the way that they pave is completely different than you just don't see this style of asphalt very much. 
I think, um, you know, the racetrack itself, I think it'll hold up fine. I think their strategy with, you know, the, the new epoxy material that they have to replace the holes and things in the racetrack when we had an issue on Tuesday, it took them, I think, eight minutes to, to fix the issue, and it was never an issue again. So, you know, I think if you just walk out there and you look at the you look at the epoxy, you're like, oh, man, that looks abrasive. But we, we haven't seen anything that's super abrasive with with anything that we've that we that we did uh, Wednesday night. So um, so I think everybody's looking forward to to racing on this style of asphalt that they don't really they don't really they don't produce this asphalt anymore. So when you can see the shiny rocks and and the, the grayness of the asphalt, I think that makes all the drivers excited. All right, Mark, go ahead. Mark Garrow, PRN. Kevin, last week at Darlington, you told us right now where Ford is. It's like going to a knife fight without a knife. But you're third in the points, only 29 points out of first place. Is is the regular season championship doable? Is is that something you guys you feel you can attain? I think for you know, I think for for us, you know, our cars have. I speak of the four team, and you know, our cars have have run competitively and we've been in position on the and just haven't knocked that door down yet but it's like I keep telling them you keep knocking on that door eventually somebody's going to answer it and you know we just have to keep dotting the I's and crossing the T's because that's just where we are um, you know from a from an aerodynamic standpoint and, and everything that goes with our car currently so we just have to be able to do everything right the cars have to be closer to perfect than you know the the other two models um, currently, so we just have to keep doing the things that we're doing, and and you know some tracks affect it more than the others, and and you know I think with with the small spoiler and the short track package, it's been good for us, you know so far, so hopefully um, hopefully that continues, and and we can continue to to do the things that we've done as a team, and see where it all lands. You just have to keep clicking them off week by week, and and so far we've done good, um, you know for the most part every week. All right, Claire. Claire Belang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Kevin, the pit crew challenges tonight. Talk about that being a part of the All-Star Weekend and how much your pit crew has been practicing and, of course, also your role in this. I don't particularly know my role, um, so I, I, but I do know that involving the pit crew is, is, is fun for those guys, and I know there's a big bonus up for grabs, so... Um, Everybody likes money, so anytime they can put, if they can put stuff their pockets full of more money than they came here with, I think they'll be, they'll be going for it. So, you know, our guys have, um, you know, for the most part, been good on on pit road, and and hopefully they can bust off a good stop and and try to win themselves some some extra cash. But that that just makes it fun. I mean, anytime you can involve the team and the pit crew and people of something unique, it, it makes it it makes it anything unique makes it fun. Also, you play a role because you got to come into pit road smoothly, et cetera. And so we didn't talk much about your part of it, but, you know. It's you want to drive? You can ride with me. <laughs> I don't know if you Maybe really they, want that. That's cut. what they should do is put you in the passenger side. You can ride in the passenger side. I'll bring you a little good luck, right? Yeah, just watch your tailbone when they drop the jack. <laughs> Thanks a lot, yep. man. All right, we're going to go to Stephen Wilson, then up front to Jeff Glutt. Steve Wilson, SpeedwayDigest.com. You talked a little bit about the history already here, and you coming here in 2010. Um, first question is, Is that do you guys advocate to come back next year, or do you advocate to do something differently other than the All-Star Race? My opinion doesn't really matter next year. <laughs> as far as from a driver's standpoint, I'm, I always advocate for something different. You know, I think um, anytime you can keep it mixed up, I think it makes it more fun for everybody. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know, um, you know, is it is it as cool if you have a points race and the all-star race? I don't even know if that's a possibility or an option. I'm just guessing. So, you know, but I, I always vote for different. I think, you know, when you when you look at all the unique events, they're never as cool the third year. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's it's just it's something that you have to keep fresh and and you have to keep new and. And what that all means, I don't know, but I think that um, a 400 lap race would be pretty cool here to see. And the second question is, is uh, you talked a little bit about the asphalt that was last laid in 1981. So, you know, as far as tire conservation coming from Darlington last week to coming to here, what is the difference that you see already? Well, it's just a, it's a much shorter track. I mean, that's the, 
that's the biggest difference. And, and y y when you look and see the lines that the cars run, turns one and two is, is really unique. And when they move that wall out, it kind of took the preferred line away. So you have to enter that corner a little bit different than, than what, they, what they used to with the way that that wall sticks out. So yeah, you know, I think the, the line is, as you come up off the corner, it's almost like you, you get up against the wall almost halfway down the straightaway and you're almost you're barely touching full throttle and you're right back out of the throttle if it's, if it's similar to what it was in the simulator, which it could be, could be total, totally wrong. But um, based upon the, the tire test and the things that they did, it's probably going to be that way. So um, there are you know, several new patches com compared to when they did the tire test, but you know, I think it's, it's really going to be about how much power you can get to the ground. Um, and it's probably going to be a bit more extreme than Darlington, I would say. All right, we're going to go to Jeff. After the group photo, you told all the photographers to stay there, and you want to take a picture of them. Why? Why? Uh, well, I mean, that was, um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's important for you guys to, to be able to say you were here as well. But that was something that that um, senior used to do, and he used to always, every time he won, he'd always take a picture of the photographers, and Dale did that a little bit. So I thought it'd be cool for him to take that picture, and I told I told Harold to send it to Dale. I know, I know he'd like that. All right, we're going to go to Chris Knight and then Steve Post. I'll work my way around the room. Um, we got a lot of hands up, guys. Just give me, give me some time. Go ahead. <laughs> Chris Knight, CatchHunts.com. Kevin, um, now we're back here at North Wilkesboro. Do you see it's if it's an opportunity, you think we should revisit going back to Rockingham Speedway? Cause that track, track also got a lot of government money invested in it. Yeah, I don't know exactly where Rockingham is right now. If it actually, did it actually get that money? It did. Yeah. They did a last, I, last I had heard they had stopped working, so. They had done, they did a yeah, I don't know if they actually ever finished. <laughs> I don't know, so. <laughs> it would be my opinion to see how the three weeks in a row go with Darlington, North Wilkesboro, and Charlotte. That would be my opinion. All right, Steve, go ahead. Steve Post, Motor Racing Network. Kevin, next week is the 600 at Charlotte. Um, can you just describe the endurance factor of that? Is it still an endurance race? Actually, we've got fewer 500-mile races nowadays, so is it endurance? Is there something that you recall about the length of that race somewhere in your career that stood out with you as far as the, the 600 miles? Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on how hot it is outside. Usually, usually it winds up just being the, the first warmer day of the year. Um, so that that usually makes it uh, you know makes it a little bit more difficult than than some of the other weekends that you've had because the early the early heat is always harder to deal with than than it is um, after you get middle of the summer because you're used to it. So yeah, I mean the 600 mile thing in itself is just unique because of the fact that it's just 600 miles and you know the engine guys freak out because you got to go an extra hundred miles and the, but the parts and stuff on the car are just um, they're a little bit. They're a lot more durable than they than they used to be because I remember when I started racing the 600, it was all about pacing yourself until it got dark. Well, right now it's really there's really no pacing yourself. You go as you go as hard as you can go and and still have the same goal of keeping yourself on the lead lap and and doing the things that you need to do until it's dark. Um, but back in the day, it was you know take care of the motor and they always you know, seem to detune the motor a little bit for that particular race to, to try to make it survive because everything was built to go f 500 miles for the most part. And, and now you got you have to run them three races. So, um, but the engine stop shop will still, they'll still have a miniature freak out, you know, just knowing that it's an extra hundred miles just because that's what they do. All right, we're going to go to Seth. Then Daniel McFadden, and we'll end up front with Steven. Go ahead, Seth. Seth Egger kicking the tires. Kevin, you mentioned that it's a little surreal to be here. Do you almost have a little bit of a field of dreams feeling today? Yeah, I, I think mine's more about the car than it is the racetrack. You know, I think that the, the car fits the setting of the, you know, of the racetrack and, and everything that, that happens. But I guess for me, it's, it's just a little bit different just because of the, you know, the, the moment and the impact and everything that, that came with the car that I'm driving more than the, it's more the car than the track for me. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great event, but, you know, to, to understand and see how important, you know, this particular 
number and paint scheme to, to I, I mean, it really caught me off guard too. I had to almost relearn, you know, the, the importance and the impact of that particular moment in our sport, because like I said earlier, it's, it's, there's more to it than the, the paint scheme and the number. And, um, it's really a moment in NASCAR that means something to people that aren't even fans of yours and the Earnhardt fans and, and everything that, that goes with it. So, you know, it's, I know that that car on the racetrack, you know, one more time is, is important to a lot of fans. So that's really, it's a great, it's a great moment for the car and, and the track to do all that together. All right, Daniel, go ahead. Uh, Daniel McFadden, FrenchRich.com. Kevin, g going off, I guess, your previous answer, up until this point uh, through like a quarter of the season, had it not quite felt like a farewell tour season for you yet? I know there hasn't been much like pomp and circumstance for like as other drivers may have gotten with their farewell tours. Has it felt like that way for you yet? Um, you know, we, we really haven't been to a lot of these racetracks for the second time. So, you know, I think when, when, you, when you look at everything that goes with it you know we've we're really just crossing the crossing the tracks for the first time so yeah all right we're going to take one final question with steven steven toronto cbs sports kevin I, I wanted to ask about the cars tour race on wednesday night because it seemed like you know we've talked about tire wear and we've talked about the asphalt here but it seemed like guys who stayed out compared to guys who pitted uh, drivers who stay out seem to be able to maintain their track position for, for a little while. Like, I know Ryan Millington, Jared Fryer finished second and third, yeah. even without uh, stopping in the last stop. Given how important track position has been in next-gen short track races, does that uh, give you an impression of what might carry over to uh, Sunday night? I don't think so. You know, I think I think with the cars tour stuff, we've kind of seen that trend as we've gone through the the first several races this year because the fields are so competitive, and the times are are the cars are so close in in time that, you know, the track position is is important because you just can't pass as many cars as you used to, uh, in a short amount of time because of the depth of the field. Um, but I, these cars are gonna they're gonna blow the back tires off of them way way differently than than the. Um, the late model stock cars did just because of the fact that they just have so much more power uh, compared to the late model stock. So I think it'll be, I think it'll be a, a little bit of a different, different style of, of uh, strategy and, and race than, than what we saw the other night. But track position was important. And, uh, and just for my records, do you know how much fall off uh, was there was on Wednesday night from the start of the run to the end of the run? And uh, what are you expecting with, uh, with these tires on the cup cars? Um, I, you know, in, in practice, in practice, the fall off was in 30 laps was about a second. Um, I would say it'll be triple that, at least double, gotcha. but I'm guessing. All right. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. Thank you, yeah. Kevin. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the extended time as well. Best of luck this weekend.